Hello, my name is Jack and I'm a health economist at the Health Economics Unit and the technical lead for the Smarter Spending in Population Health programme. I'm here today with my colleague Luca to talk to you about principles of efficiency, in particular allocative efficiency, and why they are important to consider when planning health services. I'll now hand over to Luca who will talk you through uh, principles of efficiency before uh, I will then explain why they are important in healthcare. Thank you, Jack, and hello, I'm Luca, consultant at the Health Economics Unit and Economist by Education. I'm going to present today about efficiency in health. In economics, efficiency is one of the most used concepts and has to do with the allocation of scarce resources. But how to do it and why? Let's start with the production process where we transform inputs into outputs. To fit this concept in our area of interest, let's take an ethical example through the, through the production of clinical care, like the hip surgery. Here we can identify several inputs. Surgeon as labor, theaters, bed as capital, drugs, aprons, gloves as material. We put those into the clinical care production box and through activities like hip operation or inpatient stays, we obtain output like a new hip after the replacement. All this will result in outcomes like improvement in the length of stay or quality of life, or even patient experience. The process we just described will have a cost, of course, and analyzing those costs outputs and outcomes will be at the core into the efficiency journey. Let's go to the next slide where we will be analyzing principle of efficiency. Efficiency is about how determining the best way to allocate our scarce resources. There are different ways to do it. The first step into the efficiency journey is the definition of efficiency itself. There are three different concepts that can be used in different circumstances. As you can see here, there are three concepts to consider. On the left, technical efficiency, productive efficiency in the center, and finishing with the allocative efficiency on the right. Technical efficiency and productive efficiency are more micro concepts, whereas allocative efficiency can be considered a macro level concept. Now, let's move to describe each of these efficiency. Technical efficiency is achieving the maximum output from a given set of inputs. A particular process is technically efficient when it's not possible to produce more output without using more of at least a resource input. When assessing technical efficiency inputs and outputs are both measured in physical units. Let's understand this concept to the graph on the right, using the example of the operation like before. The goal is to produce the highest quantity of hip operation as possible within a fixed budget. To do this, we need to decide how many surgeons and how many theater staff we hire. The curved line on this graph represents every technical efficiency number of hip operations that can be performed with a given number of surgeons and theater staff the inputs, as we saw. The core is called isopond and represents the maximum output that the existing production technology can produce under ideal conditions. There may be more than one technical efficient way to produce an amount of output, and we can see in fact point B, C, and D. We can also identify another point A that is outside the curve that instead represents a technically an efficient point as we are using more resources than necessary. That was the technical efficiency one. Now let's have a look at the productive efficiency that is a related principle to the technical efficiency. It is about producing output at the lowest possible cost. For a given set of input prices, it is not possible to produce more of any good or services without incurring in greater cost. Let's start with the graph. As, as we did before, where we have two inputs, number of theater staff and number of surgeons. Point A represents the inefficient combination of input. 
to be technical efficiency, we should reduce input to the point C. This new curve, the isoquant curve, is the same that we saw before. Now there is an extra element to add. In fact, C is not the allocative efficiency point, but in fact is D that intersects the isoquant line with the budget constraint. This curve is called isocost and represents every input combination that can be afforded for a given budget. To be allocative efficient, the heap surgeon service should reduce its inputs to the ISO cost line. Now, what's the minimum combination of resources to perform a given set of heap operation or how many heap operation can we do with this budget? These are the questions that we are going to answer with the productive efficiency. Now, let's pass to the last concept of efficiency, that is the allocative efficiency. Whereas the first two concepts focus on doing things right, Allocative efficiency is about doing the right thing. Allocative efficiency in healthcare is achieved when it is not possible to increase the overall benefit produced by the health system by reallocating resources between programs. When considering this concept, both inputs and outputs are values, normally in terms of costs and health gain. The concept of locative efficiency, it is concerned with maximizing the input of health, promoting intervention across a broad range of activities. That's the definition that we get from McGuire and Witter. Allocative efficiency is about whether to do something or how much of it to do it, rather than how to do it. And taking the example before, we will now ask another question. Should we allocate more resources in early diagnosis and supportive treatment or in new surgery technologies? We can see again graphically this concept to the efficiency frontier plot, where we see on the vertical axis the benefit expressed in net gain for a given set of services and then costs on the horizontal line. The aggregate level of services that we you form the system can produce health gain for a different level of resources employed in the curve A. The aim of the allocative efficiency process is to maximize the total of utility or health gain, as we mentioned, as we call it before, for a population using the same level of interest. We want to build curves like two and three that ultimately, where it's not possible to increase that level. The last and most important point of allocative efficiency is if you move resources any further, no one person can be made better off without making some other person worse off. So those were the three different concepts of efficiency. Now I'll pass back to Jack. Thank you, Luca. So, Luca has explained what allocative efficiency is. I'll now explain why it is important in health. And there are two big reasons why health planners should consider this principle. The first is that like any other public sector uh, organisation, there are limited resources for uh, health services. This means that trade-offs have to be made. For example, should we use scarce resources to purchase 100 more hip operations or 100 full prevention risk assessments, which produces the most health or benefit for the least cost or input. To ensure we're using taxpayers' money wisely, we must think about where best to allocate resources to maximise the health of the population. The second is that focusing on technical efficiency alone may not lead to improved health outcomes but instead increased consumption of health care. Technical efficiency, as Luca described, is clearly important to ensure money is being spent wisely. It is a well-used philosophy in the NHS. For example, policies aimed at reducing the length of stay in hospital following an operation are aimed at improving the technical efficiency of those operations. Less bed days are required as an input, and therefore you get the same output, a completed operation, for less input. 
whilst this is very important in healthcare and health, we should be cautious about focusing on technical efficiency alone. And the reason for this is Jevons paradox. So Jevons was an English economist in the 19th century. When James Watt invented a more coal efficient steam engine, Jevons theorized that this would lead to a reduction in coal consumption due to the more efficient use of coal. However, what he observed was the opposite. The steam engine made things like running trains uh, and certain manufacturing processes cheaper. This meant more people could afford train journeys, and that meant the demand for train journeys went up, which led to an increase in coal consumption. So Jevons stated that increasing the efficiency with which a resource is used tends to increase the rate of consumption of that resource. So let me now play this out for you in an example using hip operations. Not everyone will benefit from hip operations at the same rate. Some will benefit more and others less. Where there is limited resources, surgeons will only operate on a small number of people and all else being equal, they'll operate on those who will benefit the most. As the system becomes more technically efficient, perhaps new technologies mean uh, hip operations can be done faster or uh, there's a reduction in the length of stay, uh, the surgeons are able to do more hip operations. This means operating on people who will benefit less and less. In other words, there will be diminishing margins of return. That means that the benefit or health generated by each additional hip operation will be less than the last. Although the hip operating system itself may be technically efficient and therefore you can do more hip operations, this might, might make the overall health system less allocatively efficient. And that is because by the time you're operating on people who would benefit less, it may be uh, that you could better spend that money uh, on something else. For example, uh, on a different disease area like chronic kidney disease, or even allocating resources to prevent people falling and therefore needing a hip operation in the first place. In other words, it may be better to reallocate resources to another treatment or another intervention to generate more benefit. So that's why allocative efficiency is important in health. But why is it important now? Why are we doing this work now? Over the last decade, the responsibility for planning and purchasing health services was spread among a wide number of organisations. Clinical commissioning groups were responsible for mental health, uh, urgent and emergency care, elective hospital services and community care. NHS England was responsible for specialised services and dental and primary care services. And local authorities were responsible for public health and adult social care services. Whilst this incentivised competition, it made it difficult for money to be reallocated across the different parts of the system. The Health and Social Care Act 2022 has given local health and social care planners a mandate to come together in integrated care systems or ICSs and plan the entirety of their services for their local population. ICSs now have the mandate to think about how best to reallocate and allocate resources across the whole of their population. In order to do this, ICSs require the analytical tools to identify opportunities and structure ways of reaching decisions about how best to reallocate resources. This is why the Health Economics Unit, in conjunction with the Strategy Unit, the Midlands Decision Support Network and health economic experts from across the country are undertaking the Smarter Spending in Population Health programme. 
Through this programme, we aim to develop methodologies that can be used by local healthcare planners to identify opportunities to improve the allocative efficiency of their health system.